Hello Instagram, um, welcome to um, Thursday, well, Wednesday, it's Wednesday not Thursday, uh, welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be joined again by Omid from St Ielts and today we're going to be talking about the third part of the IELTS speaking exam. So I'm just going to let Omid in, see if I can find him. Okay, Omid, you should have an invitation now to join the video. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Omid. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm okay. Is there any way you can turn up your volume? How about now? Yeah, that's much better. Uh, Sarah, okay. I can see that you have asked to join. And can I ask why you would like to join? Because Omid and I have got a kind of plan, and we need to get through that plan before we have anybody else in the meeting. So you're welcome to join, but we need to do a few things first. If you would still like to join after that, you're welcome once, once we've done what we need to do. So, Amit, what are we, what are we going to be talking about today? It's going to be uh, a conversa conversation about the part three of IELTS speaking test and um, issues, common issues that most students may face through their experience. Um, and uh, I suppose that um, um, you would want to uh, ask me some sample questions and I try to uh, I am going to ask you some sample questions in a little okay. bit. Um, but first of all, for you, when, when mm -hmm. you took the IELTS exam, what you talked about just now, you talked about common mistakes. Mm -hmm. What do you think those common mistakes are for IELTS candidates? Well, to be honest with you, I did not study that much beforehand um, of my IELTS speaking test. You know, speaking was not my main focus. My main focus was on writing, reading, and listening. So speaking kind of uh, was, um, you know, behind the scene for me. So um, I had no plan when I took the test for speaking. But gradually after that, I learned a lot about uh, speaking and how to manage um, and how to plan uh, as a student to answer um, those types of questions, especially since I know you uh, we started our uh, collaboration, I've learned a lot from yourself um, in this regard. Um, from my experience, I believe that, um, you know, students usually have two parts of uh, issues, two sorts of issues. Uh, one group uh, got stressed when it comes to answering those questions. So they just, um, their hesitation um, keeps them back from, holds them back from providing the examiner with a precise question, with some precise question. The other group tend to talk too much, you know, and... Um, Maybe that's some reaction to some sort of hesitation, but mm, talking too much uh, may cause uh, going off topic or um, may cause an um, unfocused answer, which is not suggested for a student to do that in an actual IELTS test. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree that both of those are common problems, the kind of getting really nervous and then starting to answer and then talking too much mm -hmm. or believing that you have to just talk and talk and talk 
yeah. and actually you want to answer the question and give some information and then let the examiner kind of ask you something mm. else. Now, we Another have a mistake. question just now, sorry, from Thera. And Thera was asking, what is the IELTS exam? Oh. So, Thera, I'm just going to give you a really quick answer. IELTS is used... Um, it's used for two main things. The first main thing IELTS is used for is for applying to an English language university. Um, that could be in the UK, it could be in Europe, and they do now use IELTS also in the States and Canada. So in that way, IELTS is kind of similar to the TOEFL exam, um, but the, the structure is a little bit different, but it's used for university application. The second thing IELTS is used for is immigration. Um, so if you, if, if Omid wanted to come and live in the UK, he would need to take a different kind of IELTS exam and achieve a, a, a different score so that he can prove his English is good enough to come and live here. So basically IELTS is reading, writing, speaking and listening. There are slightly different types of IELTS exam depending on the purpose, but essentially it's either to apply to university or to apply to um, emigrate to an English speaking country. I hope mm -hmm. that helps. If you have any more questions, please do put them in the chat. Yeah, I was mentioned. I was trying to. Um, I just remember that another mistake that some students may make is that um, they try to impress the examiner with uh, their vocabulary. Uh, they try to show off. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It becomes a problematic issue when this tendency to showing off your vocabulary, your grammar, causes mechanical language. Or, um, you know, you use so much advanced uh, vocabulary, um, but you do not, as a student, you do not um, notice to uh, the appropriacy of that sort of vocabulary in that particular con uh, content. Uh, so I just uh, thought that it may come um, suitable to, know, to mention. Mm. Yeah, so that is a really common problem with IELTS, um, with the writing paper as well, is that people try to use... It, it's tricky because if you want a higher band score, you do need to show that you've got a broad range of vocabulary. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people fall into a trap of thinking they have to use extremely complicated language, yeah. which they can't really use naturally. And that then becomes a problem. And the mm -hmm. general advice for IELTS is that um, you basically need really good topic vocabulary. So you should be able to talk about and write about and read about all the kind of basic IELTS topics, um, and you should also be working on synonyms and paraphrasing so that you've got multiple ways of saying the same mm -hmm. thing. But these kind of really complex individual words like opine, I've seen this in so many bits of student writing. I opine. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, think I have never ever <laughs> used that word and I've got a master's degree and I've never needed it so yeah. you don't need language like that to succeed mm. in IELTS it's not the kind of vocabulary you should be trying to use yeah sometimes I imagine that IELTS speaking test especially is kind of like a boxing a match a box match you know um, as a boxer you are um, uh, uh, advised not to put yourself uh, stuck into a corner of the ring. You know, you should be, you should be, uh, you should keep your position so flexible. Um, by saying that, I mean that students, I had this, I had the same problem. I tend to 
bring up uh, ideas that I couldn't uh, support either due to my uh, my um, my language capabilities or my um, experience, you know. So um, another recommendation for students is just to just talk about something that is familiar to you, something uh, that is not necessarily too big, too advanced, you know. And, uh, just be yourself a little bit more. Just don't try to exaggerate who you are or the level of your language. Because that way hmm. you may put yourself into a corner of a box ring and then, hmm. yeah, the, the failure. Okay. So those are really great tips and really great problems that people often experience in this part of the exam. And I would add that another common problem is simply being tired. So mm. this is the last part of the speaking exam. So you've already done parts one and two. Mm. And for a lot of people, they've also done the reading and the listening and the, and the writing exams as well. So this literally can be the final part of a very long, tiring, stressful day. And because of this, I think people's concentration can start to uh, weaken. And I think people can um, start to feel hungry or thirsty or tired. And mm -hmm. we should never underestimate what a big role these play in how much we are able to focus and concentrate. Um, yeah, so that for me would be the biggest kind of learner problem. With, with exactly. Okay, so Ahmed, um, we're going to do a little bit of a role play now with sure. some part three questions that I have for you. Um, so I'm going to temporarily become an, an IELTS examiner and Ahmed is temporarily going to become an IELTS candidate. Um, I'm always a candidate. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long? Is part three of these about family. five minutes, four or five minutes. About four to five minutes, that's correct. So we I haven't got a clock here actually, but we'll see. I'll ask on it maybe three or four questions, and then we're gonna give you guys some tips so that you can go away and prepare for this part of the exam um, and get that confidence that you really need. Mm. So Omid, um we're gonna talk about holidays now. Um why do you think people go on holiday? Well, uh, to socialize, I believe, is the main reason as humans, um, being around other people uh, and having a great time with uh, their beloved ones. Should I continue? Um, uh, it's, like, yeah, it's hard to know if you're finished because your video keeps freezing. So I can't really tell oh. if you're still speaking or if you're thinking. Oh, no, it's finished, yeah. Okay, all right. That wouldn't happen in the exam. Um, yeah. So why, why, how important is it then for families to mm -hmm. go on holiday together? Well, for the same reason, I think, you know, uh, spending time together for families plays a huge role in, you know, strengthening the family bonds with family members. So um, going on holidays together with your family, uh, I think, uh, is a good idea. Is a really good idea to, um, you know, to improve your familial experience. And um, why then do some people like to go on holiday alone? Well, uh, some people may uh, may lack that sort of family. You know, the may may lack the privilege of um, a good family um, relationship. Maybe some people are um, kind of introvert people psychologically and some people are simply away from their families 
So, for example, a student in a foreign country uh, on a ho holiday um, alone, maybe no friends. Reasons like that, I think. Okay. And um, what kind of holidays do you think will be popular in the future? Um, well, uh, you know, uh, this uh, invention of virtual reality, I think, uh, and uh, Internet of Things, IoT, uh, may, I believe, uh, holidays in the future would be taking place in a virtual, you know, uh, environment. People, you know, families are sitting on their sofa uh, in their uh, living rooms um, via their um, virtual sets, experiencing some very, you know, um, holiday-ish thing in, for example, another environment, in another country even, or even another planet, who knows? <laughs> and finally, um, is it better to take a holiday in your own country or in a foreign country? Well, uh, it depends on, uh, you know, personal uh, features of each uh, individual. Um, I myself prefer to, um, to spend some holidays in a foreign country since I've been in most um, places in my country. You know, we, uh, as a family, we, uh, have, we uh, traveled through our country uh, multiple times. So uh, I can claim that there is no more places left to meet, to see here in my country. So I would choose going abroad for a holiday. And that is the end of the IELTS speaking test. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so these questions, they're still about a kind of familiar topic. We're still talking about holidays, which most people would have some experience of. But the mm -hmm. questions are designed to invite you to be a little bit more um, abstract with your answers and Omid did a great job of that with the holidays in the future where he talked about using virtual reality headsets and maybe being able to go off into space um, <laughs> as a holiday and that's fantastic because that's kind of Omid um, talking away from his own personal experience unless they've got that kind of technology where Omid is which is possible and um, mm -hmm. It's always good, I think, when you're doing part three, if you can, to look for opportunities to um, talk about things in a slightly more abstract way. So, for example, with that last question about taking um, a holiday in your country or going abroad, it's a really good opportunity to speculate. So you can talk about you and your experience. But this is a great question to hypothesize and say, oh, well, you know, I would do this. But I imagine that there are people who would rather do this. And if these people, you know, and using those conditional structures and showing mm -hmm. the examiner that you can talk about things that are not your personal experience, that is a really good thing to do in part three. That would be a tip that I would give anyone who's working for IELTS speaking exam is to really, really work on structures in English that allow you to speculate because most non-native speakers don't do this enough. And it gives you the ability to answer questions in a much more in-depth, sophisticated way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right, if you were going to give a tip for someone who's working towards IELTS and they're working on part three, what would you say to them? Um, I would um, take your last advice and I would use um, part three questions, a, an ideal place to show off my, my grammatical, uh, you know, 
uh, knowledge, knowledge in grammar. For example, using conditionals, using mixed structures, using um, if, things like that. Uh, examiners do look for these sorts of structures and that would really um, play a huge role into a higher band school. Absolutely, absolutely. And you're completely right that part three is where the examiner is really going to push the candidate to see how good their spoken English really is. So they, they're kind of, they will already have an idea whether you're a kind of lower level or a higher level candidate, but they will be expecting you to show off and to demonstrate all of your strengths. Um, and again, you know, that question I asked you about holidays in the future, that's a great example of when you can show them your future tenses. You know, future tenses are often underused as well. You know, the, you need to be listening for this in the questions and thinking, okay, great, this is the question about the future. I'm going to try and show off my, I don't know, future continuous and future perfect or something. Mm -hmm. And you only need one example and the examiner is trained and they will hear it and you will get a tick. Even if it's an attempt and it's not completely accurate, you will still get... Um, the acknowledgement of trying to use that advanced structure. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Cool. So, Omid, have you got any any more thoughts, any more tips that you would give people about the third part of the speaking exam? Mm. I can't think of uh, any more tips for now. Maybe we can. Um, we can discuss it further in the next slide. Mm. And I've just seen we've got someone joining us from LA where it yeah. is 22 minutes past seven in the morning, which, uh, good morning to you. And um, here it's about good half morning. past three in the afternoon. I think for Ahmed it's about almost seven o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, it's very lovely of you to join us so early. <laughs> Um, I don't think I would be on Instagram at 20 past seven in the morning. Um, but we're pretty much done unless anyone has any questions. Um, and we're going to be making another IELTS video in two weeks time, uh, same time, same place. Sure. Sure. Thanks very much for joining everybody and have a great rest of Wednesday um, in LA. You've got the whole day to enjoy. So have a great day. Have a great day.